uh, this session with Metrics DAO. Today we have Playgrounds. Playgrounds is going to demonstrate as their amazing tooling and showcase us how you as an analyst can make the most out of it. We're gonna learn uh, what play makes Playgrounds so special and what sort of great features it has implemented. Uh, before we start uh, talking about Playgrounds, I'd like to introduce you to MetricsDAO. MetricsDAO is a Vepri analytics community. We have thousands of people in our community that are actively learning about different exciting tooling, such as Playground, going through various analytic challenges that we have available, even getting paid for completing those challenges as well as we have a bunch of opportunities for you to learn how to become a better analyst. And we have certain programs available like Webfree 101 and, or Webfree Analytics 201 programs that you can join as well. And they all are free. So if you are not yet part of our community, the best way to join would be to um, just join our Discord community. Right, um, so enough about Metrics DAO for now. Um, I will give the mic over to Tachi from Playgrounds, uh, who is going to tell us what Playgrounds is about. So Tachi, over to you. Hi, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me over. And hello, everyone at Metrics DAO. Um, really happy to be here. Uh, my name is Tachi. I'm a co-founder and the CEO of Playgrounds Analytics. And today I'll be talking to you about Playgrounds, what we do, and how our goal is to simplify data analytics leveraging your subgraphs. In this discussion, I'll be going over just a little bit about us and give a little bit of an overview on what subgraphs are what exactly is Playgrounds, and what is Subgrounds. And of course, it's gonna be a fun time going over a demo on how to use our tools to do your data analytics. So what is Playgrounds? Basically, we are a data solutions company that provide the easiest and most reliable tools for blockchain data analytics using subgraphs. And our goal really is simple. It's to provide the easiest way to do data analytics with your subgraphs period. And the reason that we kept our goal as straightforward and simple as this is to basically close the loop that data analysts like yourselves would generally have to go through to go from discovery um, of the data that you're interested in on the blockchain to telling a meaningful story. By providing the simplest, most streamlined tool, we're able to break down the entire workflow into three major steps, which is something to query a tool that allows you to process, and a tool that allows you to analyze that data much more easily, um, leveraging your subgraphs. We believe that breaking down the work into these three distinct steps um, makes data analytics a lot of fun, especially when doing data analytics with blockchain data. So what exactly is a subgraph? I think it's important to take one step back and look at things from the big picture. I like to think in analogies, so if you would indulge me, um, let's use an analogy to describe what subgraphs are. If you consider a book as blockchain data and the graph network as a public open library uh, where all books that has ever existed and will ever exist are stored, then a subgraph is simply a librarian that organizes and stores those books um, into categories, you know, like fiction or nonfiction and titles like The Odyssey and, and iRobot. So a subgraph's job is to simply organize that blockchain data by defining specific categories, creating indexes of that data so that it's easy to search and find the data that you as a blockchain data analyst need um, to do your work quickly. So that's a very top level um, view um, on what a subgraph is. More technically speaking, um, a subgraph is simply a custom built API that indexes and stores data from various blockchain networks. Um, and this allows you to, um, uh, you can go here. Uh, this allows you to, you know, 
query, collect, process, and store that data in an efficient and structured manner. Um, so it's much more easier to find the blockchain data that you need. So why exactly should you use subgraphs for your data analytics? Well, it comes into three flavors. Number one is standardization. Subgraphs really um, lends itself to standardizing on-chain data um, and allows you to index that standardized on-chain data much more efficiently. Subgraphs are scalable. Um, they scale horizontally to handle massive amounts of data and requests um, that you might need for your real-time data analytics. And they're flexible. Um, they offer a precise way to pick and choose the exact data you need without having to query everything and then do some pre-processing and filtering beforehand. Um, you can just point and pick only what you need um, using a subgraph, which is really cool. And looking at it through the lens of the graph, so taking a step back from, okay, we know what a subgraph is, and so what does my data workflow look like through the lens of the graph? Um, you can really look at it into three distinct stages. There's the data collection stage, there's the data processing stage, and there's the data analytics stage. And in the data collection stage, this is where the graph comes into play, right? So the graph indexes and stores all of that blockchain data. Remember, it's our library. So it's, it's acquiring all of those books um, from various networks, uh, and it's providing an efficient way um, through a structured way to query and access those books or um, using the subgraphs finds a better way to find the books that you want and provide them to you much more efficiently. The data processing stage is basically um, the customization or the flexibility of the subgraphs that allows you to design exactly what you want when you query. And the graph provides you a GraphQL query language that allows you to process and transform that raw blockchain data into something that's much more meaningful um, for you. And the last stage, of course, is the data analytics stage. So the graph provides you with this GraphQL API that allows you to query um, the, the, the subgraphs that you're interested in and filter and sort the data that's been indexed by that subgraph so you get exactly what you need um, to tell uh, a meaningful story with your data. But it's not as easy. And the, when using subgraphs in GraphQL, there are some things to consider, especially as a data analyst uh, working in, in, in Web3. One of the three things that you should consider is subgraphs in GraphQL really does low level of interoperability. Um, and what do we mean when, you know, when we say low interoperability? Well, you can't really work with GraphQL and use it in an environment that works with other standard or legacy um, um, data science and analytics tool, for example. And that kind of makes it difficult to have a smooth, streamlined workflow from querying your data to doing some analytics on it, and then you know maybe aggregating it and pushing it or merging it with some other analytics you've done um, from using another tool. So that friction makes it a little bit difficult um, to combine different tools and data sets from different sources when using GraphQL. Another is limited transforms. Uh, when using subgraphs and your GraphQL, it's not as easy and intuitive um, to transform your data into something that's truly bespoke, uh, truly meaningful to you. Um, so that, that's a friction point that a lot of data analysts are, have to contend with when working with GraphQL. Another is a level of complexity. Working with GraphQL is not as intuitive. Uh, it's, it's a very good query language, but the barrier to entry is pretty high. There's a high learning curve. You have to understand the nuances of working with GraphQL, uh, which makes it a little tricky uh, to use it as an efficient tool uh, for your data analytics workflow. So these are things that a lot of data analysts who are leveraging subgraphs and GraphQL for their data analytics work usually have to contend with. I and mean, there's a lot of friction and, and it's discouraging. And this is where Playgrounds comes in. Playgrounds basically says, okay, we see the value of subgraphs as a better tool to do your data analytics work with blockchain data. So let's provide an enhancement to that experience, all from the collection stage to the, process, to the processing stage and the analytics stage. So you can think of the tools that we provide as enhancements that simplify or streamline data analytics workflows using subgraphs in GraphQL. So what does the picture look like with Playgrounds um, in the mix? 
Well, let's take a step back again and look at the three categories. When it comes to data collection, you know, nothing really changes. The graph indexes and stores the data from various blockchain networks, making it accessible um, through your subgraphs. But here's where things get really interesting. The data processing and transformation stage takes a different shape. The graph still allows you to create custom subgraphs, but Playgrounds comes in by providing an intuitive Pythonic API to interact with your subgraphs. And now you start seeing, okay, like it's, it's a Python API, it's Pythonic, which means there's interoperability. The learning um, curve is a lot lower and it works well with any data environment. So you can start using you know, the Python API that Playgrounds provides to interact with your subgraph much more intuitively. And the last stage, data analytics. Playgrounds enables you to integrate your data into familiar and powerful data analytics libraries. Most of you would use, you know, like a notebook like Jupyter. You might prefer some visualization tools like Plotly or Altair. Um, Playgrounds provides the tools that allows you to streamline your entire workflow from collection to analytics so that it's familiar, it's intuitive, it's simple. Um, this is how Playgrounds enhances and unlocks true data analytics with your subgraphs. And so here's a picture like, of what we provide. The tool is called Subgrounds. And Subgrounds really is the easiest way to query subgraph data. Subgrounds is a Pythonic um, API or it's a Pythonic library that allows you to easily load any subgraph, allows you to easily query that subgraph, and then process it into something that's much more meaningful. And because it's pure Python, you can then integrate that workflow into things that you already use for your data analytics work, whether it's visualization libraries that you like, whether it's you're building a data application, um, or you have a data environment like Postgres or Google Sheets or S3 or whatever tool or environment you use for your data analytics workflow, Subgrounds allows you to easily integrate your subgraph data, your blockchain data, into the tools that you're already familiar with. And this is why Subgrounds is so powerful um, and it's the easiest way to do all of this work. So Subgrounds really is open, meaning that it allows you to, it's open source, so it allows you to customize it to fit your needs more specifically. It's modular, which means that it's extensible. You can um, pick and choose what you want to use to solve that uh, specific data needs you have. And it's accessible because it's a Python API. It's easy to understand. It's easy to learn. The barrier to entry is a lot lower than trying to enter with um, GraphQL. So Subgrounds really is the ultimate tool for data analysts who want to leverage their subgraphs to do data analytics. So why Subgrounds? As I mentioned, it's easy to use. It's customizable because it's open source and it saves you time because you're not learning new skills, you're not learning new tools, you're not having to learn the complexity of GraphQL. And because it's Python, it's ready for analytics right out the box. You can start using it um, alongside Plotly and Pandas, which are also built in to the Subgrounds library. So Subgrounds is made for you. We built Subgrounds with you in mind. Um, and that's why we're really proud to showcase the Subgrounds library um, to the metrics DAO community because we love data analytics and we love our data analysts um, and we want to see you succeed um, while doing your analytics work. So of course, let's do a quick demo to show you the power of Subgrounds. So in this example, um, I've created a Jupyter notebook and I'll be using subgrounds to query a subgraph. The first step when using subgrounds is really straightforward. You import your subgrounds library. Subgrounds is available um, publicly so you can download it using pip. Um, you can go to our website or go to our docs to see instructions on how to easily download and, and get started with the subgrounds library. But in my environment, subgrounds loaded up. So I import the subgrounds package and let's run that. And then the next step is to instantiate the subgrounds object. In this case, I just say, hey, SG is equals to subgrounds. And this is a really cool part. I can just load my subgraph um, by passing the URL. I'm sorry, Tachi, just uh, one quick note. Uh, it's really small and it's really hard to see what is on the screen. Okay, let's make it bigger. How about this? This is much better. Okay, no worries, thank you. 
Um, okay, so loading your subgraph. Using subgrounds, you're able to easily go to the graph explorer that's provided by the graph. So in this case, you can, you know, go here, find a subgraph that's of interest to you. In this case, I'm looking at some hosted subgraphs and load the URL. In this case, I say, hey, subgrounds, load that subgraph, run that. And now I can start playing with that subgraph in my Python environments using subgrounds. The first thing I'm going to do is construct a very simple query. In this case, I'm going to say I would like the last you know, snapshot for the last 30 days, and I would like to query the user metrics daily snapshot, which is an entity on the subgraph itself. And I'm telling subgrounds that when you construct this query, I want you to order the data you get back um, in descending order. And I only care about the first 30 rows. In this case, that's equivalent to the first 30 days um, from the snapshot. And I know that the, um, the subgraph provides me the um, timestamp, but timestamps are not necessarily readable. So this is another cool thing about subgrounds is you can create really complex queries on top of your subgrounds. And in this case, I'm showcasing something that we call synthetic fields, which for many of you who are familiar with SQL, a synthetic field is analogous to SQL views. It allows you to create a quote unquote synthetic column or row that it's in itself queryable um, on the subgraph. So you can query this as if it exists on the subgraph to begin with. In this case, I'm simply saying, hey, whenever you see the timestamp, just convert it to date time and then query. And in this case, I have constructed a very simple query that's going to get me the last 30 days worth of data. And anytime it has a, it sees a timestamp column, it generates a date time column um, as if date time was already on that subgraph. So I'm going to run this cell. And here's a really cool part about subgrounds, query DF. Using query DF, you are able to transform and return your queries as flat tables. So in this case, I'm saying once you run the query, return a data frame, for those of you who are familiar with Python, and for those who are not, is essentially a flat table. And in this flat table, in this data frame, I want my columns to be date time, the daily active borrowers, the daily active depositors, and the daily active liquidators. I'll run that, and boom. In seconds, I have a data frame from my date time, which was converted from the timestamp borrowers, active depositors, and active liquidators. This is the power of subgrounds. It allows you to manifest your data immediately from any subgraph, whether it's a hosted subgraph, a decentralized subgraph, subgraph studio, whatever. Subgrounds is the fastest and most intuitive way to load, query, and visualize the data that's stored by your subgraph. Go ahead and do this. All right. So interesting that we mentioned um, prior to today is that subgraphs are really complicated when it comes to the decentralized side of things. When working with subgraphs on the decentralized graph network, as many of you might know, they generate a lot of steps, and these steps involve managing your wallet. For anyone who has tried to or wants to try to query a decentralized subgraph, you generally have to go through these five, this five steps. You have to buy a GRT, whether it's by using Coinbase or Uniswap. Then you bridge it um, to another network, and, and this is um, outdated. It should be Arbitrum. You bridge it over, and then you load your GRT wallet, generate your API key, and then query a decentralized subgraph. For many people, this, this step, this process is extremely tedious, and there's a lot of points for risk and failures, and it's just discouraging to have to go through this just to query your subgraph. And this is why we're proud to say for the metrics style community, um, we'll be launching a beta of something we call the Playgrounds Gateway, which condenses the complexity of interacting with decentralized subs um, into three. You sign into Playgrounds, you click a button key, and you start your decentralized subgraphs immediately. So what does that look like? 
um, using subgrounds. Let's go over to our notebook. And here I've created a similar notebook um, with uh, some key differences. Similar to the prior notebook, we imported our library. We have the date time, the subgrounds library. And here is something that's really interesting. I, let me go ahead and exit so I can show you the workflow. Let's go ahead and reset that. I'm here in the Playgrounds account. I log in. And in here, I have this dashboard that allows you to um, manage your queries and much more have a much more intuitive experience with your, your API key management. I simply click a button. I generate a new API key, which essentially is just a proxy that abstracts of working with the decentralized graph. So you're still querying the decentralized graph as you will normally, but with completely streamlined and simplified the process. So from here, I can just rename my key. I would say metrics two. And I can then copy my API key. And in the notebook, the steps is very simple. You will in, you know, initialize your subgrounds. And the key here is we have added a header, which allows you to then copy paste your API key that we just generated, right? Like that. And load the subgraph as we will. But in this case, the key difference is the subgraph is coming from the decentralized work. So the decentralized network here. And what's really cool is you can just simply copy the subgraph ID, paste that in your notebook right here. So let me go ahead and do that, copy. Paste. All right. And everything else stays the same. We construct our queries the way we did previously in the hosted version of that subgraph. As you can see, this is the hosted one created by Masari. This is the decentralized version of the same subgraph, but it's on the decentralized network. And let me go ahead and run my cells. Construct a query. And boom. Playgrounds is now simplified the entire process from the decentralized work, which is managing your wallets and buying GRTs and loading it up to query the decentralized subgraphs, to querying the subgraph itself to get in a flat table in seconds. And this is our mission, to make the lives of data analysts like you at MetricsDAO much more simpler and your workflow much more efficient, whether it's working with a decentralized subgraph or working with a hosted subgraph, your life is now significantly easier um, using subgrounds and the tools we build. So today we're releasing the beta, which is available to the metrics DAO participants or community members, and we'll be offering free queries. There will be about 5,000 free queries um, offered to the metrics DAO participants. And because it's still in the beta, um, to get in access to the Playgrounds Gateway, uh, it's pretty simple. Just please join our Discord and tag a member of the team. We would love to talk to you and, and learn about the project you're working on. And simply request a gate, um, gateway access and we'll grant you access. And in a few weeks, uh, we'll be releasing um, the public version of Gateway for the entirety of the world. So you all get um, early access to Playgrounds Gateway so you can start working with those decentralized subgraphs um, as quickly as possible. And thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Tachi, for your great presentation. And uh, do uh, ensure to utilize the uh, special um, offer that um, Tachi has mentioned. Um, to our community. Um, so now it's a perfect time to ask any questions. So uh, we have some time for a Q&A. So if there is something that you would like to learn about subgrounds, um, if you have any 
analytics specific questions, um, then this is a great time to ask. And I see one question here in the chat by Elvis, which is where to sign for the beta again? Yes, of course. Um, so stop by our Discord. Um, I would have someone on the team is going to drop the Discord invite link. And after this call, we'll post it in the metrics.community. Um, and just pick any of us, ping me, um, Stouffer, Thierry, any member of the team, um, and we'll grant you access as soon as possible. Amazing, amazing. So would, uh, would it be then a good way to ping you through Discord? Yes, you can either ping me through Discord and you can also find me on Twitter um, or you can ping Playruns on Twitter. Any of our um, social media is a great way to reach out to us if you would like access to the gateway. Amazing. Um, so, we, so someone's also asking, so after the free queries, what is the general cheapest rate? Uh, could you repeat the question? So... So after the free queries are going to kind of uh, be, be, be done, like when, mm -hmm. what's going to be the cheapest rate after, afterwards? Uh, I see. Yeah, so we're still in that process of understanding what uh, the, the rates will look like. So for now, it's just going to be free. And the feedback we receive from you, the community, would help guide what that would look like for us. So you get, you, there'll be a, a promo code for the metrics.community, there'll be some surveys. We really want to build this um, with you in mind. So we'll, apart from using the gateway, uh, we would love to have contacts and calls or surveys um, just to get your feedback and get a better sense on what that pricing structure could look like. But for now, it's free. Amazing, amazing. So ensure to make the use out of it. And as mentioned in the chat that with the free plan, you will always have 3,000 queries per month for free. Um, also, uh, Padmo is asking in the chat um, if you have any suggestions to a SQL person on how they can get a group on GraphQL. Um, how they could, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah, so how can someone who already knows SQL mm -hmm. uh, start uh, their journey with GraphQL? What would be the best kind of path to, to start learning? Ah, I see. Well, if you do want to learn GraphQL, um, the Graph does have some great resources on how to get started. Uh, for me, my journey was just looking at YouTube videos and studying GraphQL and reading docs and playing around with the, uh, with the environment really is a fast way to, to learn um, how to work with GraphQL. And we have ChatGPT these days, which is another amazing tool that could be used to um, fast track your learning of um, GraphQL itself. Uh, but I think if you want to you know, specifically focus on subgraphs, um, just play around with the subgraph explorer see how the entities are constructed and the fields are constructed and they have a playgrounds environment in there um, that you can query um, and, and understand how things work. Awesome. Uh, so we will actually have um, as well a workshop um, with playgrounds on the 9th of May and I'm going to share with you now the event right link in the chat so you can already sign up to the workshop using this link which is um yeah going to be as well a good way for you to learn how you can start using this tool in practice and all the other links such as discord website twitter and and docs uh when uh, for playgrounds are all in the event description in our YouTube, so um, you can actually find all the links there. Right, um, and we have also uh, one, um, yeah, I think that these are so far all the questions that have been here in the chat. We still have a couple of minutes, so if something still comes up, um, do do let us know in the chat. Mm -hmm. And um, if more questions will come up to you later, then do join um, the Discord and ask uh, Tachi and uh, his team there. 
And Tachi, is there anything else you'd like to say before um, we finish today? Um, no, I think um, I'm really thankful for having us on uh, this session. Uh, I'm really excited to read these comments and questions uh, that's coming on in the chat as well. Uh, yeah, please stop by our Discord, talk to us. We love to learn what you're building and um, your voice matters. Um, the, the problems and challenges you face with your data analytics um, workflow guides the design decisions we make with subgrounds. So please reach out to us. We'll love to hear what you're doing and what you're building and how we can work together to make Web3 data analytics much, much simpler. Amazing. Thank you so much, Tachi, uh, for this session. Do ensure to register to the uh, workshop on the 9th of May, and the link is in the chat. And thank you, everyone, for joining the session uh, and learning about uh, subgrounds. Um, great. So let's finish then for today um, and have a, have a lovely day ahead, and we'll see you in future sessions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.